So guys, it is the fourth week into lockdown. Um, my boo stash is questionable. I'm about to reveal myself as a brunette. The Botox is certainly worn off. And I'm doing a Land Rover Discovery review in a Kia Seltos. But I did have these signs made, but it won't, oh, it is staying. Okay, to trick you. Okay, is it working? Picture the sea and the mountains. Just pretend I'm driving in the Land Rover Discovery Sport. But I managed to get to the launch before lockdown. And so I was able to drive it. So I thought, how about a lockdown review? I mean, it's genius. I mean, the creativity that is coming out of me is unreal. No, I'm joking. This is as creative as I'm getting. I think I'm going a little crazy. <laughs> So the Land Rover Discovery Sport was refreshed and upgraded now. So it's got a few style changes. You might miss them unless you're looking for them. It's like a new LED headlamps front and rear, a new bumper and grille, and you can now get 21 inch wheels, but you probably shouldn't because why? If you want to go off-road, that's there's no point then. But you know, whatever you think you might need. Inside, also not huge changes. I mean, I'm looking at this car as if it was the car, but not huge changes going on memory here um but still very premium very modern one of my favorite things is actually the terrain response style and i've mentioned this a thousand times on reviews that i've done but because i think it does just look so slick and so wonderful it's now integrated into the climate control console and then you just press a button and then change the what would have been essentially the temperature gauge is now the terrain response dial super cool i think so the thing that makes the Disco Sport quite unique is the fact that you can get it as a seven-seater. Um, you have to pay for it, though. And one needs to consider that it's a very spacious five-seater. But if those seats are up, those seven seats are up, then you've got minimal boot space. So just something to consider. But Land Rover claims that they've got, or that it offers, 24 seat combinations. <laughs> okay, so you just know what I'm talking about, right? Okay. Okay, so speaking of being at home, um, I don't know if any of you feel like this at the moment, but okay, this is why this song has been chosen. <laughs> I got the hippie hippie shakes. Got the shakes. I got the hippie hippie shakes. Oh, I can't sit still. So Land Rover claim 24 seat combinations if you've got that extra row of seats, which is pretty cool. I mean, that makes it quite practical. To be fair. The engine of choice for me would be the two litre four cylinder turbo diesel. It's the D180 badge. You can go for the petrol if you'd like, um, but you know, fuel consumption and 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 whatever. Also, you're getting 132 kilowatts of power and 430 newton meters of torque with the diesel engine. Um, certainly sufficient power. Uh, what is noticeable is the new transmission. Uh, which is smooth shifting and it doesn't hold onto a gear like the previous model did. Um, there's a, like ever so slight turbo lag if you're at speed and wanting to quickly do like, you know, an overtaking maneuver or whatever, but certainly not enough to bother me and a lot bothers me. We know how impatient I am. Um, so that was very noticeable. Oh, the hippie hippie shake. Shake it to the left, you shake it to the right, you do the hippie shake shake with all of your might now, baby. The ride is super smooth, and that's because it's now underpinned by Jaguar Land Rover's premium transverse architecture, PTA, if you will. Um, basically, it makes it 13% stiffer than what the previous platform did. Um, you've got very minimal um, road noise and wind noise and cabin noise and everything, which is um, very cool because when I think you use this car to go on road trips and everything, and you, I hate that like vibe. No one's, no one's got time for that trip, you know? What I do love in this new Disco Sport or this updated one, and we've seen it on the Evoke, and I, they're like party tricks, okay? Because Terence is like, mm, like, whatever, they're lame. But I kind of like them just because are they fun to show people, really. That's why I call it a party trick. One is the clear sight ground view, which essentially makes the bonnet invisible so you can see what's literally what is happening underneath the car. So if you're going to hit a rock or you're going to hit a curb or you're going to hit something, you can see it, okay? Which I think is amazing. It's all on the screen here. Well, not this one, but you know what I mean. 
Um, and then you've got the clear sight review mirror as well, which you click the review mirror and it turns it into an HD camera. I don't love it while I'm driving. Actually, in fact, I keep turning it off, but I think if you got used to it, it would come in very handy, especially if you do have stupid big ass lanky teenagers in the back with a big head in the middle and you can't see past them. Quite nice to have that because then it shows you exactly what's behind you. So there's just like some fun tech in this car that I think will probably not the diehard like Land Rover fans enjoy, but I certainly enjoyed them. But I'm easy to please. Actually, that's a lie. I've just told you that I'm not. Hm. Woo! The hippie hippie shake. Ah! Oh, that is how I'm feeling. So pricing starts at just under 750,000 Rand and goes right up to just under 910,000 Rand uh, for the top of the range petrol. Um, like I said, I would go for one of the D180 models. In fact, I'd probably go for an S or an SE. I wouldn't even go for the top of the range HSE. I just don't think that you need all of that. Um, it's not cheap, you know, but it is an off-road capable seven, potentially seven seater, which in its segment is pretty rare. I would still consider an Audi Q5 or a Volvo XC60, but you've just got to look at what your needs are. Do you know, if you do enjoy off-roading quite a bit, then the Disco Sport's probably going to be the one that you are going to lean towards. So, you know, again, just comes down to personal preference, you know? So seeing as we are in lockdown, my free advice this week is just stay the f*** at home. I mean, it sounds so simple, because it's not simple, but Here's my annoyance and my advice to people who are breaking the rules or finding loopholes or still taking their dogs for walks or going for jogs or walking around the states and doing whatever they sort of feel they can do because they're not hurting anybody. The reason that you're able to do any of that is because of the people like me who stay at home. Because if all of us did what you are doing, then we would have a problem. We would all be out and the whole thing would be pointless. So here's a thought for you when you are running and you think i'm not hurting anybody and i need exercise and 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 just look at the houses around you and go you know what i'm being a selfish piece of shit because all these people are doing that so that i can do this and i just don't know if that you feel that you're that entitled and that better than anybody else to do it whether it's going to visit someone or going for a bri or going to visit your neighbors i just think guys you know it's not that much to ask to just stay home you know we're four weeks in, we've got a couple of weeks left, for goodness sake. Get your shit together, man. And I can now do shit, I don't have to hold the steering wheel, because I ain't really driving. Woo! The hippie hippie shade. Oh, man. I need a drink.